victim of the situation and the situation can be changed. I am not stuck. If it's, if it's generated from my consciousness, I am not stuck. So what is the thought that we should put out if you want to let it go? There is no gain at all to me in this. What? There, there is, is no gain, gain at all to me in this. And I always put things to rhythm so I can imprint it in my consciousness and in my body. I'm not interested in, in a, just a class that's just about the head. We gotta get it inside of our being. There is no gain at all to me in this. There is no gain at all to me in this. There, there is no gain at all to me in this. There is no gain at all to me in this. Then it goes on to say, there's no now, to say this and mean it, to say this, it says, and to uh, have it work, he says, to say this, one first must recognize certain facts. In fact, first, it's obvious that decisions are of the mind, not of the body. Decisions are of the mind, not of the body. So your body didn't make you do it. Your mind made you do it. Then it says, if the sickness or problem is but a faulty problem-solving approach, it's a decision. So if, if, I'm, if I'm having this, this, I'm trying to solve a situation by giving myself this situation that I'm going through. If I'm trying to solve a situation by giving myself the situation that I'm going through, then the course then says, if it's a decision, it's your mind and not the body that makes it. The resistance to recognizing that it's your mind that's creating your experience is enormous. Because yeah. the existence of the world as you perceive the world depends on your body being the decision maker. Right. That's another way of saying the existence of the world as I perceive it, it, it must look like my body and everything in my physical universe seems to be happening independently of my choices and my decisions. Right. That's the way the average person, I'm this person and I'm operating at effect of what's going on with my body and my world. Uh, I have a stomach ache. I didn't decide to have one. My body just started to hurt. The whole existence of my world <coughs> is based on the belief that things that are happening to me are being caused by things outside of my own mind. That's the base, that's the world. It's your fault. Somebody else is causing it. Someone else is doing it. Everybody got that one? All right, so then the Court says next that terms like instincts, reflexes, and the like represent attempts to endow the body with non-mental motivators. Actually, such terms such as instincts and reflexes merely state or describe the problem. They don't answer the problem. So instinct sort of mean I, it happened, but I didn't have, again, I didn't have anything to do with it. That was just my instinct. That, that, was, that happened as a result of my DNA and my genetics. It still has nothing to do with my consciousness. You know, I have this problem because I inherited it from my parent who had this same genetic disorder. Still, the thought is always something is causing me to be the way I am that has nothing to do with my mind. So the court says the acceptance of sickness or the problem as a decision of the mind for a purpose for which it would use the body is the basis of healing. So what is the basis, what, what is the basis of healing? The basis of healing is me telling myself what I am going through is a decision of my mind. How I am perceiving things, that's a decision of my mind. How I see you is a decision of my mind. How I experience you is a decision of my mind. Everything that's happening to me is my choice. That's, that's what starts the healing process, is for me to say what's happening to me right now it is coming from my own thought. The way that I'm seeing things, the way that I'm feeling right now, it's coming from my own thought. It's coming from my own consciousness. My thoughts are determining the way <laughs> I feel. That's the basis of healing. That's the basis of undoing fear. It's for you to recognize no matter what's going on in your life right now, you're the one, you're choosing how you are going to react to it, see it, and actually at another level, it's actually coming from your own consciousness to begin with. That's the basis of healing. I don't know how it happens. I don't know why it happened. I don't even know if I agree that that's what's going on. But the truth is, everything that's going on in my experience is happening because of the choices I'm making. And the way I feel about it is coming from my own decision, the way that I choose to see it right now. So who can tell me what the basis of healing is? Perception. 
It's just what I said. Just what I finished saying. I always ask the question, this is something I just said. That, which would be kind of easy if I heard it. But you know that you go into course, I don't know what the hell he's talking about kind of place, right? Like I said before, to start out sounding like English, and then I'll talk for a while and it starts sounding like gibberish. Blah, 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 because it's so different from the way we're programmed to think. These are very simple concepts. They're just different from what we're taught. I'm going through this problem right now because I'm deciding to go through this problem right now. I'm seeing this way, it this way right now because I'm deciding to see it this way right now. I'm wanting to see it this way because there is some kind of payoff to seeing it this way. When I'm willing to recognize there is no payoff in my suffering, the suffering will start to be here, healed. There will be many things that will begin to happen in my life that will bring about the healing in this situation. The once I've decided that there's no value in me going through it. But, you know, if my sickness gets me a lot of attention, I don't want to be healed. You know, my mother loved her seven children. My mother taught me a great lesson. She made us her entire life. And so her happiness seemed to be determined by how much we visited her, spent time with her, and gave, us, gave her a lot of attention. And when we didn't, then we would get some really cool expert guilt trips <laughs> that would be put on us. She was a, a loving, powerful, wonderful being. But she was a master of guilt and being able, you know, go out and have a good time. Go out and where her head is in the oven. Go out and have a good time. <laughs> don't, you don't worry about me. You know, just go out and have a good time. You know, you know, any of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And so, um, so therefore, when she was doing well, we did this really strange thing. We would live our own lives. <laughs> and we would tend to want to do what we wanted to do, which, of course, that didn't please her very much because she didn't have any friends because everything was focused on us. So she was actually sadder when she was healthy and doing well. But if she got really ill and we had to go to the hospital and all seven of us were there doting on her, you could actually see that in the midst of the pain and the tubes and everything else that was going on, she felt good to have our attention. So she was programmed to believe that the suffering that she was going through was a small price to pay to have her children around her giving her whatever attention she needed. And so some people want to have attention even if it's negative attention. So therefore they'll create a lot of drama in their lives just to get the attention that the drama gives them as well as keeping their life from being so friggin' boring. So now you got this latest drama that you're trying to get through. You follow me? So actually, I would rather have the drama than the boredom. So the conflict that I'm going through is a small price to pay if it's going to give me the drama that makes my life seem like it's something more than just going to work, coming home, watching TV, going to bed. You see, the average person. So average people keep drama going just so they'll have something interesting that they're dealing with. And so when you present them with the opportunity to be healed, they don't jump for the opportunity. <laughs> because they know their way around their misery. They don't know how to do happiness and love and prosperity and peace and join it. They know how to be suspicious, but they don't know how to trust. They know how to have fear, but they don't know how to love somebody. So if I'm afraid of love, I'm going to keep choosing people that's hard to love because it would then justify my never opening my heart. Because the real trip is, I'm afraid to open my heart. So what I'll do is draw people to me that justify my being afraid yeah. to open my heart. I really would, but so far I just haven't really found anybody I can really <laughs> trust. But the truth is, I'm afraid to love. So if someone really showed up appreciating me and really being trustworthy and kind, then I've got to step up at that point. I don't have an excuse for no longer opening my heart. So if you're afraid of love, you're going to make sure that no 